Hey everybody, and welcome back to another Flick Direct review. Isola here, and do I have a hot one for you, or rather a cold one. This week's release is Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. So sit back, relax, and let's get this started. I'm sure most of you have seen this movie, but if there are a few of you out there that did not go to the theaters to watch this, let me just give you a very brief, no spoiler synopsis. Basically what happens is the new Ghostbusters, which you would have found that out in Afterlife, need to team up with the OG Ghostbusters to kind of, you know, work on their skills, just make them a little better. And what better place to do that than the place where it all started, New York City at the infamous firehouse. And let me tell you, I'm just glad that that's back because it's such an iconic building. And I'm so glad that they just use it whenever they can. Anyway, obviously things go awry as they normally do. And then OG team and new team now have to work together to stop a villain who actually releases all the ghosts from the past and wreaks havoc on the city. It's chaos, always chaos. When it comes to movie reviews, I'm not as nitpicky as a lot of those who critique movies. And that's primarily because I go into these movies or even TV shows, anime, cartoons, whatever, um, with pretty low expectations. Um, and that's really because I hate being disappointed. Uh, but if I go in with low expectations, I'm, I actually am okay. You know, I tend to enjoy it a little bit more. But I will criticize things that I don't really like about the movie. So let's get on with this. When it comes to Frozen Empire, I did enjoy the movie. It was a fun watch, but it was kind of like Afterlife, which is the one before this, except they get from point A to point B a lot faster without as many twists and turns. And I kind of want some extra subplots, you know, really get your brain off of the main plot so that you're a little more surprised at the end and it's not as anticlimactic. Um, I like to be surprised. Now, I mean, it's kind of hard to top finding out about the Spangler family and how they had to overcome some obstacles. And, you know, it really showed how important family was. And I really enjoyed that. Plus, you also had the supernatural element to it as well, because what Ghostbuster movie would be a Ghostbuster movie without ghosts? It'd be kind of silly, actually. But again, it had some heartwarming pieces to it and it kind of got you off track of the main plot and then reeled you back in. And that's what I was kind of hoping with this one. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about in regards to the Spangler family, uh, you should probably go watch Afterlife um, because it'll probably help you fill in some gaps that will be in the second one. So definitely watch that first, just so you know what's going on. At the end of the day, Frozen Empire is a fun movie. It's definitely one that you can watch with the kids. It's got some fun supernatural stuff. It does get a little scary for kids, um, but overall a very enjoyable movie for the family to watch. It also has action, of course, and comedy because, I mean, look at the cast. Paul Rudd for Pete's sake. Of course it's gonna have some humor. And since it really hits almost every genre, like I said, the whole family can really enjoy this. Now, because of this, I would probably say I give this movie a three out of five, and that's just for plot alone. And now for what you've all been waiting for, drum roll please. I need to get something to do the clips, but that's what you get. So obviously you are going to get the poppy, which is right here. I love the cover. And it doesn't really give away anything because I already told you the OG cast is in it, so it's not a spoiler. But I do really like it. 
And also with that, you get a digital copy. So if you go on road trips or if you travel a lot, you can also watch it while you're away from home. I mean, you could also bring the disc with you, but I look at this as a library piece. So technically it's not really gonna leave the house. So the digital copy is great. And not only these two items, but you're also going to get the following deleted scenes, Easter eggs. Again, not gonna give you too much because you really need to watch these. So bear with me while I kind of read to you uh, everything that is in here because I think you'll really enjoy it. First, you're going to get the audio commentary with director and co-writer Gil Kennan. And I always find these a lot of fun because sometimes they're really funny or extremely informative. How they made a set, how they came up with costume ideas, music, all of these things are all wrapped up into the audio commentary and it just kind of gives you a little more insight onto how they made the movie. Another fun item to watch is Manifesting Garaka. And I probably messed that up. I've heard it a million times and I still, I'm really bad with names. So I'm lucky if I can pronounce my own name correctly. But anyway, this basically gives you how they came about making the villain and you know what lore they used. And so it's really actually a, a fun watch because I always like to see how they came up with things and sometimes you're surprised because they actually had lore before this. New York New Gear. Now this one's a lot of fun too because it's kind of taking you through the old and new gear, things that they're using in the movies and you're just getting a glimpse of how it was made. Easter eggs. Who doesn't love Easter eggs? I mean, I play video games 99% of the time just to see how they're gonna throw some Easter eggs in it. I have some developer friends and they always tell you to look out for certain things when you, when you play the games. So it's a lot of fun. But anyway, these Easter eggs are old and new. So definitely give it a watch because watching this could actually explain some things that you either may have missed or just makes it more insightful for the piece that you may have not understood. Welcome to the Paranormal Discovery Center. This basically takes you on a tour of the research center, which I thought was a lot of fun as well. New York, new gear. Now this one's a lot of fun too, because it's kind of taking you through the old and new gear, things that they're using in the movies. And you're just getting a glimpse of how it was made. Okay, I promise, almost done. The next one is knowing the score. And this one's great because it's all about how they came up with the music. I absolutely recommend watching this one. It was one of my favorites just because I love watching how people compose things and it's just really a great watch. And finally, we have deleted scenes. I think there's about six of them and it's under 10 minutes to watch them, so it's really not gonna take up too much of your time. I always love deleted scenes, but I do have to say none of these really were missed, if you know what I mean. It, if you wanted to add these in, they really wouldn't be value added. So, you know, I still give it a watch though because it kind of shows you how they got from point A to point B in regards to that scene. So it's quite interesting. You can see maybe why they didn't use it because maybe it just didn't fit in. Again, give it a watch. I think you'll really enjoy it. Now with all of that, which that is a lot, I would give that a four out of five stars. It's not perfect, but it definitely gives you a lot of extras. And we all like a little more, especially if we're buying something. So definitely give it a watch. And now on to audio and visuals. I love Blu-ray, I love 4K. You just get very beautiful video quality and audio. So I highly recommend getting this because it just makes everything 10 times better. The visuals are crisp and clean. You're seeing the contrast, the brightness, the darkness when it needs to be and it helps the scenes so much. You're really getting more of an emotion, which I know sounds silly, 
but you do. You get to see that emotion that they're trying to invoke when they were filming the movie. And then of course there's the audio. I already told you about the soundtrack. The music is just beautiful and I absolutely loved just how they added sound to this movie. So when you have objects that they're working with, the ghosts, the voice of the villain, whew, let me tell you, that thunderous kind of voice, you can feel it in your gut when you're watching this. So definitely have your bass up too because that really gives you a much better experience with the audio as well. I am going to give the audio and visuals both a five out of five. Like I said, clean, clear, everything is beautiful. When you watch it, you're really gonna understand. It's just, it's great. So definitely give it a watch and let me know if you would have given it the same star rating. So with all of that, I am giving Ghostbusters Frozen Empire a four out of five. Now I know what you're thinking, Isola, Come on, it's four and a quarter out of five if you do the math. Well, yes, I've done the math and I don't wanna to have to cut the stars in quarters. So therefore, we are rounding down and mathing to four instead of 4.25. But if you wanna get technical, yes, it's a 4.25 out of five. Anyway, you won't have to wait long to get this because it is on sale today. So make sure you go to your local, I don't know, Best Buy, Target, I mean, it's in pretty much every store, or you can buy it on Amazon, but at least you don't have to wait too long like I had to. And with that, this concludes the Ghostbusters Frozen Empire review. Be sure to subscribe to both of our channels to ensure you don't miss any updates. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.